Hello everybody, welcome to the World Monologue Games Global Finals. You are watching the main professional category. This is our last event for the year. These are the very best of the very best performers from around the world in our main category. So World Monologue Games has uh, many hundreds and hundreds of performers submitting work from all around the world. Um, I can't remember exactly how many countries submitted this year, but around 80. And these are the best perform performances that have come through first the qualifying round, then into the regional finals, and now in the global finals. The very best of the best. My name's Pete Maliki, I'm the creator of the event and your host. And I'm just gonna say a couple of quick things and then I'll hand right over to our performers. So uh, here at World Monologue Games, we ran uh, 21 live stream events in the regional finals in six different categories. Um, we have, I believe, 18 performers for you tonight from around the world. Um, so it's gonna be really exciting and I hope you enjoy the show. We do have strong language and adult themes and all of that fun stuff here at the game. So if you are sensitive to any particular subject matter or anything like that, do please be aware that it could well be in this show. We do sometimes have the same monologue script performed by more than one actor because we let the actors select whatever they want and their tastes coincide sometimes. You guys get to vote and help select who will be our global champion for 2022. So at the end of the show, I'll come back on and explain how that works and open up the voting lines. They are not currently open. We have judges as well who are watching the show and the judges and viewers will help pick who lands on the podium, the bronze, the silver and the gold. If you want to show us a little bit of support, hit the like button or give us a subscription or leave a chat message if you're watching live or drop us a comment if you're watching later. It's a lovely way to support the performers as well. Um, that's probably about all I need to say. So I am going to hand over to our performers now. Um, it's our last show for the year and I do hope you enjoy it. Let's... Sit back and relax and watch World Monologue Games 2022 Global Finals Main Professional Category. Bird fish we told. If he can't feed nothing else, he shall feed my revenge. He held disgraced me and hindered me half a million. He laughed at my losses, mocked my pains, scorned my nation, cooled my friends, heated my enemies, and what's his reason? I am a Jew. Had not a Jew eyes, had not a Jew hands. Organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions. Are we not fed by the same food? Hurt by the same weapons, subject to the same diseases and cured by the same medicine? Are we not warmed and cooled by the same winters, the same summers as a Christian is? If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you take us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? So if you wrong us, shall we not revenge? If we are like you in the rest, we will resemble. If a Jew wrongs a Christian, what is his humility? Revenge. So if a Christian wrongs a Jew, what should his sufferings be by a Christian example? Why? Revenge. 
the villainy you teach me, I will execute. And you shall go hard. But I will bear the instruction. Have you ever been in love? Horrible, isn't it? It makes you so vulnerable. It opens your chest and it opens your heart. And it means that someone can get inside you and mess you up. You build up all these defenses. You build up a whole suit of armor so that nothing, nothing can hurt you. And then one stupid person, no different than any other stupid person, wanders into your stupid life and you give them, you give them a piece of you. They didn't ask for it. They just did something dumb one day, like kiss you or smile at you. And then your life isn't your own anymore. Love takes hostages. It gets inside you. It rips you out and then, and then it leaves you crying in the darkness. So simple a phrase as, maybe we should just be friends. All of a sudden turns into a glass splinter that works its way into your heart. And it hurts. Not just in the imagination, not just in the mind. No, it is a soul pain. A real gets inside you and rips you apart pain. I hate you all. This guy comes into the cafe that I go to and he starts chatting to the owner and I instantly hate him. You can just see the entitlement in his eyes and smell it on his stupid leather jacket. He's one of these people who thinks that he can charm everyone he sees with his fake goofy smile and his oversized dumb mouth. He sits down and he pulls out a laptop and a thermos. Well, who brings the thermos to a cafe? He's supposed to buy a coffee, not bring one. And it looks like he's settling in now, like he thinks it's his own free office space. He calls out, hey Marty, I'll have one of those cupcakes, bro. <laughs> Marty? <laughs> I've been calling Martin, Martin, for two years. I'm not going to insult the man with a stupid nickname that he's obviously going to hate. So I hang around, because I just want to see how long this entire wanker is going to stay in his office. It's two hours. Two whole hours, can you believe it? I hang around about three minutes after he leaves so it doesn't look weird and I thank Martin and I head out. He's not there the next day but he comes back Thursday. <laughs> he's there for two and a half hours this time. He starts coming in three days a week and he's getting real chummy with Marty. I'm drinking two coffees every visit because I just want to show Martin that I'm a much better customer than Mr. Thermos Man. Well, pretty soon he's there every time. Every time I'm there, and it's ruined my cafe feng shui. Square jawed, charismatic, used car salesman, wanker, and his buddy buddy ways. I came here to change my environment, to refocus, and now all I'm thinking about is how mad this jerk makes me. I love your jacket. <laughs> he's looking right at me. What? I love your jacket. Looks pretty sweet on you. I'm pretty jealous over here, I am. Oh, thank you. I really like your jacket too. It's leather. 
Uh, no, it's Lena. <laughs> I mean, it's the good Lena. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to jet. See you next time, yeah? Yeah. Well, David gathers up his laptop and his thermos and the good leather jacket, and he hands Marty a $10 note, and he doesn't even pick up his change. <laughs> or, or even look back at me once. Hey, that fucking wanker. <laughs> the way you were chasing those monkeys, baby. I really thought your purse was gone, but no, those monkeys messed with the wrong girl. <laughs> Hi, baby. I miss talking to you. I know. I know. I haven't talked to you lately. I've been working real hard since, well, you know, since. So, that's why I'm here. I want to share something with you that I quit. I finally quit my job, baby. After 12 fucking years. It was amazing. You should have seen his face. You were right. This whole time you were right. So many good moments. So many memories that we lost because of that stupid job. That's why I'm telling you all of this, because I have another surprise. I bought. I bought the tickets to Paris. You always wanted to go, remember? Baby, please come with me. Baby, no monkeys this time. Happy anniversary. Looking back, I'm not really sure where we went wrong. Me and Gary, we, we did as best as parents. I did all the things he seemed to struggle with, you know, eat your five a day, don't do drugs, wash down below and be in by nine. But still it happened. Monday the 8th of March 2021 at exactly 13 minutes past six. I remember it like it was yesterday. And, well, I don't think Gary's left the house since it happened. I came home from work the other day to find him sitting there with a photograph of our Alex and Ryan Giggs. It was when he wore a mascot on his birthday. And United won 3 mil. <laughs> I don't know who enjoyed it most, Alex or Gary. Such happy memories. Our Alex had been quiet all day. I thought it was because I told him he couldn't have his favourite Aunt Bessie's sponge pudding after tea. Mum, Dad, there's something I need to tell you both. It's going to come as a shock and upset you, but I can't keep it in any longer. Well, he had our attention then. Gary even put his newspaper down. But my motherly instinct kicked in straight away. Alex, son, you can tell us anything. Whatever it is, we'll get through it together. Won't we, Gary? Alex took a deep breath and just came straight out with it. Mum, Dad, I want to start supporting Man City. All my friends are doing it and I'm joining them. Gary started to make a sort of a choking sound. <coughs> there were tears in his eyes. But I stepped in as the voice of reason. Alex, love, we christened you Alex, Cantona, Schmeichel, Giggs, Ferdinand, Robson, Ibbotson for a reason. We've just spent £50 a roll on Manchester United wallpaper for your bedroom. I don't think they've spoken since. Gary's just broke. 
our allies came home in a Man City training top the other day and I think it's just pushed Gary over the edge. I need to find a way to, to build bridges to make sure we're a family again. But before I do, I've got to pluck up courage to tell Gary that on a personal level, I've got quite a soft spot for Pep Guardiola. I'm ready to give my statement. Um, so we come back to Ballarat and Sophie was put in the special care nursery and I noticed that something wasn't right and I kept telling the nurses and they kept telling me that I was just being paranoid and then all of a sudden she just stopped breathing and this doctor came in and he told us to get in the car. He told us to get in the car. He said it'd be a lot quicker and I didn't. I, I wanted to stay with Sophie. I wanted to go in the ambulance with her. And he said it'd be a lot quicker if we just got in the car and drove to Melbourne right now. So we started driving and I was with Jeremy. And I was driving. And I remember seeing this ambulance just zooming past us and that feeling of my baby's in there and just wanting to speed and chase. And I thought for a moment that I could keep up with this ambulance. I haven't even, I haven't even seen Sophie. Like, is she okay? Jeremy, is she okay? No. My oh, baby? <laughs> Jeremy, no. Not my baby. Oh, I need to see her. Please, please let me see her. <laughs> Oh, oh, Sophie! <gasps> you are probably wondering why I haven't killed you yet. I'm actually wondering that as well. I'm not so sure, because usually I just do it. It takes less than a second and then it's just forgotten me the next. With you it's different. I don't know why. I don't know why. Like why? Why can I not kill you? I have no feelings for you whatsoever. I don't even know you. We've never met. That's so strange. I guess, I guess even the greats have an off night. Maybe this is my off night. Maybe. Should I let you go? I mean, should I let you live? Yeah? You think you should live? Well, I should just let you walk right out of here. That is something to be hopeful about, isn't it? Some psycho was about to kill you and then just let you go. <laughs> what a story you can tell your friends. I mean, that's just amazing stuff right there, don't you think? But I have to kill you. No, no. Relax. I do. I do because that's what I'm supposed to do. Even when an athlete is having an off night, he still performs. I have to perform. I'm not sure I could live with myself if I don't perform. 
and letting you go and make me the star player that I believe myself to be. You understand, right? I mean, yeah, it sucks for you that I'm gonna kill you now, but I'm sure there's a part of you that understands, even if it's just the tiniest little part. Look, I usually forget these things, but this time around, I will definitely remember you. Take care. changed it in my mind and just before we got to Liverpool Street the train pulled to a halt. I mean there's, there's nothing strange about that, it's, it's always stopping. I only didn't move for like, like 10 minutes and you know, people started grumbling and, and sighing and, well, and, and, then, and then the lights went out and at first there was that, um, well, that, that, that titter of laughter you know, like a, like what next? And then more sighing. And then eventually there was, th there was just silence. And in the dark, I started getting these, um, well, like, like, like these flashes, like, like flashes of, of being trapped and, and, and the tunnels collapsing in and, and rubble dropping down. And, and it felt like the oxygen was, was getting less and, and it felt like I was getting cramped and, and, and I started became panicking and. But then, then we started reversing backwards. It was when we got out that we heard a bomb had gone off. It will get east three more across London. You know, with everyone else, there was this, this, um, with this sense of defiance, you know, or, or of just not being afraid and, and, and this total unity and not being afraid. But the problem was I was afraid just, just of something completely different to, to everybody else. And the dreams at first, yeah, they were, they were of roofs and, and of ceilings and then of planes and, <laughs> well, you know, what next? And, now, who knows why? Yeah, maybe because everything else felt irrational, like 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 freak occurrences. And and I know, I know satellites must seem to normal people must seem so irrational. Yeah, maybe I just needed something that was that was always up there, you know, that could come crashing down at at any moment. 
just, just to justify the way I was feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another drama. He is still on the same questions again. When are you getting married? When are you going to school? When are you having children? When are you doing this? When are you doing that? It is always about me and it's always about you asking me these same questions all the time. Day in and day out, I am trying my possible best to put my life in a situation whereby I will be that perfect and better version of myself. But you, you always have to ask these questions, starting with when, with so much audacity and confidence, just to put my life in a situation that I can't even explain and I, I don't even have answers to. So can't you just say it's going to be all right? Oh yes, I know that marriage is, is beautiful, but it doesn't legit you to be great. Can't you say yes? In no time you're going to have kids. Can't you just can't you just give me statement, encouragement? But you, you always have to ask a question starting with when just to put my life on that impression that I can't even understand. Do you even care about me? Do you? I am trying, I am trying, I am trying everything, I am trying. I am trying, I am trying, you need to understand me. You need to understand. Because when always put you first and not me. When always discloses your self-interest and not me. When always put your first priority and not me. You are always the first. I am tired. And I am done with this drama. I will never be weak. Never. I do love her. I love her even more when she's sleeping. <laughs> you know, friends had told me how difficult it might be to adapt to new baby life, but it's not too bad. I remember saying nothing in our lives would change. Looking back now, I can see how they found that funny. That's okay. We were ready to move on to this stage of our lives, and it's not like we were party animals. But I do miss sleep. As they say, you never know what you've got till it's gone. I wasn't really sleeping well before she was born. It didn't matter how exhausted I was, I was just so uncomfortable, I couldn't sleep. Now I could, but she won't let me. Seems now every hour I'm awake just revolves around her. Feed times, nap times, change times. Oh, I feel like I'm constantly changing her clothes from a poo explosion or wee flood. Both. Oh, she's thrown up her milk. If I don't burp her well enough, up it all comes. And it's change clothes again and feed again because she's thrown up everything I've given her. Which is hard to take because I don't produce an awful lot. I can handle this. I've broken my day down into six hour stretches. I've just got to get through those six hours. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back and start those six hours all over again. I'm sure it'll get better. Although we were in the middle of Bunnings the other day, she was screaming. This old couple walks by, laughs and says, it never gets much better. I don't know how it could get worse. You know, sometimes she cries and I, I don't know why. You know, I, I fed her, burped her, changed her, she slept, we've cuddled, but she just keeps screaming. You know, I had her lying on my bed before that's just watching her scream after another change and this image pops into my head where I grab her by the ankles and I swing her smack against a wall. I love her. I do. I love her. I'm just exhausted. <laughs> She's finally quiet. She's upstairs sleeping.
Father's Day today. I've been Sunday. I've been waiting in all day for my three sons to turn up with presents and cards. I haven't arrived yet. But I should do soon. It's getting rather late after all. Still, it's been quite a good day, I suppose. Did I hear a knock? Was that a knock? I'll pick and see. <laughs> they were right. <laughs> I'll make you fuss about nothing. <laughs> Hello? What are you hiding? <laughs> Gonna jump out and surprise me, are you? <laughs> Paul? <laughs> Dave? Pete? Perhaps not. Must have been the wind. Kenji has dropped a small talk. You like me? No, don't give me that face. I know you like me. And you know that I know, so let's just accept it. Kenji, I want to have sex with you. <laughs> because you're cute. And you're sweet, and we, I don't know, we, all, we obviously like each other. Dale. <laughs> wow. Dale's going to cheat on me. Dale has Tinder. Not only does he have the app, but he's talking to dozens of women on there. Yeah, he's even got a fuck date planned next week with a woman named Cindy, so... So, if he's going to have an affair, then I want to get in first. You know, like a, a preemptive marital strike. <laughs> Kenji, you like me. And I... Definitely like you. Take your clothes off. Let's have sex. voices were right. Yes, they told me you were fools and I was not to listen to your final words or trust your charity. You promised me my life, but you lied. You think life is nothing but not being stone dead? It is not the bread and water I fear. I can live on bread when if I ask for more. It is no hardship to drink water if the water be clean. Bread has no sorrow for me and water no affliction. But to shut me from the light of the sky and the sights of the fields and flowers to chain my feet so I can never again ride with the soldiers nor climb the hills to make me breathe foul, damp darkness 
and keep me from everything that brings me back to the love of God when your wickedness and foolishness tempt me to hate him. <sighs> All that is worse than the furnace in the Bible that was heated seven times. I could drag about in a skirt. I could let the banners and trumpets and knights and soldiers pass me and leave me as they leave the other women. If only I could hear the wind in the trees, the larks in the sunshine, the young lambs bleating through the healthy frost and my blessed, blessed church bells that Bring my angel wings floating to me on the wind. But without these things, I cannot live. And by your wanting to take them away from me, I know that your counsel is of the devil and that mine is of God. He wills that I go through the fire to his bosom, for I am his child. And you are not fit that I should live among you. Man, I want to miss us, bro. Get in all kinds of trouble doing dumb shit with you. <laughs> I remember that time I did you know, run past that cop naked. And you just got out the car and started hauling us right past him. <sighs> I'll never forget how funny it was seeing a cop. And a horse chasing after you down the street by that snake. <laughs> With your ass cheeks just glistening in the moonlight. <sighs> and that image is just permanently seared on my brain. I'm on. Um, Well, mate, it's my guts right now for not coming to the funeral. She says, because I don't love you enough. The truth is, I loved you the most. I just... I just couldn't do it. I think it's just a small part of me just doesn't want to believe that you're gone. You're blowing up a storm up there, bro. Because when I get up there, I'm gonna kick your ass for leaving me so soon. I just hope you know I love you every day. Now I will tell you the answer to my question. It is this. The party seeks power entirely for its own sake. We're not interested in the good of others. We're interested solely in power. Not wealth or luxury or long life or happiness. Only power, pure power. What pure power means you understand presently. We're different from all the oligarchies of the past in that we know what we're doing. 
All the others, even those who resembled ourselves, were cowards and hypocrites. The German Nazis and the Russian communists came very close to us in their methods, but they never had the courage to recognize their own motives. They pretended. Perhaps they even believed that they had seized power unwillingly and for a limited time, and that just round the corner there lay a paradise where human beings would be free and equal. We're not like that. We know that no one ever seizes power with the intention of relinquishing it. Power is not a means. It is an end. One does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes the revolution in order to establish the dictatorship. The object of persecution is persecution. The object of torture is torture. The object of power is power. Now do you begin to understand me? What would you expect me to think? I come home and he's sitting in the armchair with a glass of his precious Hibiki Harmony 30th anniversary limited edition whiskey cupped in his hands. Do you know what he says about this? The greatest pleasure of my life is the anticipation of drinking this. He got that statement from some TV show or other and thought it was brilliantly clever. Repeated it at least twice a week. So when I saw him drinking it, and I'll add that this is a $5,000 bottle, I could only assume the worst. The board have finally sacked him, and he can't bear to live with the indignity. Well, why else would he have opened his treasured whiskey? He didn't drink it when we got married. When our daughter was born. Or when he became CEO, so... Either he's about to top himself, or he's got stage four cancer and wants to go out happy. I rush up to him and I smack it out of his hands. <laughs> I know, there's no reason for me to do that, but I panicked and my reflexes took over. What are you doing, you crazy bitch? What are you doing, Malcolm? I know there's only one reason you'd be drinking that. You're going to kill yourself. He composes himself instantly. Amazing that he could always do that. Walks past the $600 whiskey stain on the carpet, fetches a new glass from the cabinet, sits back down, pours himself another serving. There's a thousand dollars swilling around in there. I'm celebrating two incredible things, he says. The deal finally came through, and I'm a majority shareholder now. I just became a billionaire. Oh! oh wow! Number two... I'm leaving you. The house is yours, but I'll be gone tomorrow. Now fuck your wrinkled ass off out of my sight while I finish my hibiki. Turns out, he wasn't a billionaire for very long. Linda, Linda, turn that music down. I know you like to play it when you write poetry, I know, but please lower it because it's making me see the white light. All right? Thank you. That's better. That's better now. I might be old, but I still got my hearing. Don't ask me why. Everything else seems to have gone. I could have done without the hearing at this point, especially in a house full of women, including that evil cat too. Bastard of a cat. Every time I make eye contact with that ferocious animal, she jumps up and claws my balls each and every time. Ridiculous. Nobody would believe. Nobody. Wonder why I walk funny. But no, we still keep the cat because Telly loves her. If my balls still worked, that cat would be out. 
And that's the truth of it. Out. It doesn't matter about dead balls. She can claw all day long. It won't affect my libido. Not one bit. It hurts to piss. But that's about it. I can take it. Old school, baby. Not like these fellas today. I can't make heads or towels out of some of them. With their hair parted to the side now, flapping in the wind like they're some kind of Vogue model. What's happening with men today? Getting prettier than women? What's next? Makeup? The day I see young men starting to wear blush and eyeliner, I'm checking out. What the hell am I talking about? Well, I'm actually talking about... Ah, oh, what's the point? This is what happens when you get old. You talk about cats clawing your balls and boy makeup. Nothing else interesting going on around here. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Okay, everybody, that was it. That was the main professional category at the World Monologue Games Global Finals. That is the last show for the year. The World Monologue Games is coming to a close. We do have our results to announce on Wednesday, and that's it for 2022. That said... Uh, a nice segue into voting. So I have just made a change to the description of this video and I have now included a link to our voting form. You have 48 hours from the end of this broadcast to pick your two favourite performers and help select who goes onto the podium. We have the bronze, the silver and the gold. So uh, jump in over the next 48 hours and vote for your favourites. If you're watching live, just hit the refresh button and you'll see in the description, just hit the show more button or the little down arrow under the video and you should find a link to the voting form. We also have uh, a challenges program at World Monologue Games. We have a film festival. We have next year's event. So we'd love to have you with us if you're keen to get involved. Check out the links in the description of this video. So uh, once the viewer vote and the judges votes are all tallied up for this show, as well as the other shows we've had this weekend and last week's shows, we will announce the winners this Wednesday at 8pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time. That is Sydney, Australia's time zone. So if you want to see who lands on the podium for each of the six categories at World Monologue Games, as well as the updated rankings and who has won an achievement badge, we have uh, an achievements program and a rankings system. Um, come along on Wednesday and check out the results with us. We'd love to see you there. That's it for now. Um, huge congratulations to all of the performers who made it through to the globals in all of the category categories. There's just such amazing um, actors out there and it's just great to see them uh, get to this stage. Really significant achievement to make it through to the globals. Congrats to all of the main pro performers tonight. Just really high standard across the board. Good stuff. Well done. See you on Wednesday at the results. Ciao.